Hey, what's up? I'm David from DoD Media. Uh, it's been a little while since I made anything. I took a bit of a break over Christmas, but I'm back now and we're going to do a cool tutorial in Illustrator to show you how you can make a poster like this, which is basically text that wraps around an item. All you're going to need is some original text and a logo or drawing or icon or something. It doesn't have to be vectorial as long as it's in high resolution and it doesn't have to have a transparent background because we're going to actually work around that. So let's get started in Illustrator. Okay, so once Illustrator's up, you're gonna to wanna to create a new file and come along to print, because the idea is to print this. Uh, so it's gonna operate in a CMYK color base instead of RGB, because that's what a decent printers will want from you. And choose whatever size you want. Um, I'm gonna say we're gonna make this, let's view all presets. Yeah, I'll make this A3, that's all right. That'll do. Create, cool. Now, I'm not really happy with the vertical aspect of this artboard, even though that poster is vertical. Um, I kind of want to show you how it'll look in horizontal. So if you click on your artboards here and just swap it around there like that, and that's grand. Okay, so what we're going to have to do first up before we do anything is get some text. Now, if you haven't got text, just find whatever story it is that you want to do. This is the entire Hobbit book in like teeny tiny font but if you get close enough you can actually read it and that's kind of what you want with this you want it to be recognizable so i'm gonna go for alice in wonderland because it's uh, easily accessible so you make a text box fill it with lorem ipsum text and then come over here and let's copy all of alice's beginning i'm just gonna make this page smaller so i can copy it all easily You copy that, head back to Illustrator, and hit paste. Now I had to miss out the first couple of letters because otherwise it was going to copy all of the menu and stuff and I didn't really want to have to go through that and remove it. So you paste that in, I'm just going to go back up to the very top and put Alice, there we go. Now that's cool except that it's stretching all the way across the canvas. So the next step, hit escape to get out of your typing so you don't accidentally type any stuff in there. Okay, next step is to come up to type and type area type options. Click on that and here you see you've got columns. Now it's really up to you, if you hit the preview you'll be able to see how it looks. It's really up to you how many columns you want. Um, I think really for this to work, and I, I had a dozen there, for this, for this to work you're going to need a considerable amount. So I'm going to add, I'm going to add 10 and then I'm actually going to go back and nick a few more chapters to put them in. But next step is the gutter. The gutter is the space between the columns, and you want that to be relatively small, because otherwise it's just going to look like there's loads of empty space um, on the page. So let's just bring this down to maybe two millimeters. Cool. That's good. I like that. Okay, next up is the font size. This you're going to want it to be pretty small. So let's say seven, and then I'm going to go through to the next chapter and copy that. Curiouser and curiouser. Okay, copy. Let's head to the next part there. Chapter two, cool. Then chapter three. Uh, uh, and just copy that. And that is probably not going to render well, but we'll see how it does. What is going on? I was pretty certain. Oh, it's because I reduced the gutter. That's why. Okay. So now let's make the text a touch smaller. Yeah, see that poem's just not really that riddle bit's just not working, so let's just get rid of that for now. Bang to there. Okay, now I'm going to leave these two columns empty because what we're going to be doing is adding a drawing or something in there, and the text is going to wrap around it like it would in a Word document when you set it to wrap it as a square, where it wraps around your 
where it wraps around your item. So um, I've got a little sketch here from the Alice in Wonderland website. So I'm going to save it because I'm going to need to remove the white background from it. If you find a PNG, that's cool, but you still need to save it because copying something straight from your browser into Illustrator will not work. Um, so I'm going to show it in Finder. I'm going to open that with Photoshop. And then I'm just going to remove that white background so it's transparent. And then I'll bring it back into Illustrator. OK, so it's open in Photoshop. You may not need to do this if you've got something with a transparent background. Just dump that file straight into Illustrator. But if you haven't got something with a transparent background, then do this. You just make a copy of that. Let's delete that guy entirely. Double click on the thumbnail. And then here on this, this layer here, on the blending modes, uh, just drag that up one dot. There you go. Uh, actually, if you want, you could hold Option and just drag this forward a few as well. That way, as you can see, it gives you a very nice transparent um, outlined sketch. All right, then you save this as a Photoshop file, or actually, no, we save this as a PNG file. So Shift Command or Shift Control S, Illustrator Sketch, cool. We're going to go for PNG. There you go, PNG. And we call it White Wabbit. All right. Compression. None fast into that, yeah, whatever. I don't care. Fuck you. Okay, don't save because we don't need it. Cool, we're done. And in fact, we can get rid of that too because we've got all the text we need. Okay, now White Rabbit PNG. We're going to drag that on, dump them in there. And there we go. Now he's a bit big, so I'm just going to scale him down a tiny bit to that. There you go. Now we're going to lock him just for now. And we're going off the text just for now. And what we're going to do is hit the pen tool, okay, and just hit this uh, no fill thing so that it doesn't fill it because otherwise you're not going to see what you're drawing. So we're just going to start drawing around him. Now it doesn't have to be too far, but just bear in mind that you want it to be far enough away that it's not going to look like it's bleeding onto the picture when you when you add this in to the text. If you happen to have a logo that has big white spaces in the middle, you probably, probably don't want to put text in those white spaces. Like here, for example, if this was much bigger, where the rabbit crotch is, um, I wouldn't, I still wouldn't choose to put text in there because it'll look a bit strange and you'd only have a few words that are chopped and hyphenated and it just, it just looks a bit crap. So it's better to just leave it as blank space. All right, so that's my outline done. Next up, you just want to hit that fill button again, because otherwise the text isn't going to have anything to measure itself against to outline itself, because it doesn't look at the path, it looks at the fill, or it looks at the shape. All right, so then we zoom out. OK. We, what do we do, what do we do? We, we unlock the text, but we keep the sketch locked so that we can't select it. All right, and then select both of those items, come up to Object, and in Object, we want to go to Text Wrap. Now in Text Wrap, hit, actually, let's just hit Release for now, because I kind of screwed up already once. You go to Text Wrap, and you hit Make. Bang! Now that, you see, has wrapped itself around the shape. Now, by default, your Object Text Wrap might be a little bit wider than that. Uh, so what you can do here is go into Text Wrap, options, sorry, I kind of go into text wrap and then it's text wrap options. And there you can change the offset in terms of font size in points. So um, if you make it like four points or five points, then that should be plenty as long as you've kept fairly close to your object. Okay, hit all right, or hit okay. And that will wrap itself around your object. Now, if you remove the visibility of your path, you are suddenly left with your outline. Fantastic! That's what we want. So now you can deselect that, and now you can start editing your text itself in terms of the font size. So 7 is way too big, but 6 is too short. It's got a lot of extra there. So let's start going into points of point size. So point 3, too big. Point 1, too small. 
0.2. Nearly just right. Uh, what the hell's going on? 0.29. There we go. All right. And there you go. There's your awesome poster that you can print off and hang and people can be like, oh my god, is that like the whole story? And you go, yeah, it's the whole story, man. All you have to do is send this off to a printers as a PDF or as an Illustrator file. To be honest, most of them accept Illustrator files. Uh, all you may need to do is select your text and create outlines. What this is going to do is every single letter and character that's on there is currently text which is modifiable and it will make the file a lot heavier what you want and oh and also if the place doesn't have the font then you're kind of screwed because they'll open it up and if you've included unless they have the font then they won't be able to get your font if that makes sense should make sense it makes sense so hit create outlines and that will actually turn every single letter and character into a shape and that shape is then just a shape it doesn't matter if they have the font or not. So hit create outlines. Bang. It's going to take a while to do. There you go. And now every single thing in there is a little shape. And if you save that, send it off to your printer, you can have an awesome poster like that. Thanks for watching.